Madhya Pradesh is home to more than 3,700 DPIT-recognized startups, and more than 1,100 of these are actually founded by women entrepreneurs. The state's startup growth, though, wouldn't have been possible without the 50-plus incubators that have been set up over the years. And so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 startups in Madhya Pradesh, starting with the city of Bhopal, where we have Swayat Robots. And this company claims to have developed level 5 autonomous driving capabilities. So back in 2009, Sanjeev Sharma was so inspired by the autonomous driving technology technology demonstrated at the 2007 DARPA Urban Challenge that he started researching the technology on his own in his spare time. By 2015, Sanjeev had walked away from his dreams of pursuing a PhD to start Swayat Robots with 30 lakh rupees, or about 65,000 US dollars. Now, most modern autonomous driving technology makes use of LiDAR and radar technology to build self-driving cars, but at the time, this would have cost Sanjeev 75,000 US dollars just to get the LiDAR technology, and this was more than the entire amount that he had used to set up his company in the first place. And so instead, he started working on developing autonomous driving technology without using LiDAR and radar technologies to make it cost effective. In fact, just recently, the company released a video demonstrating its autonomous driving technology, and they've managed to do this with just $3 million in funding, which they raised back in 2021. And what makes this achievement even more impressive is the fact that Tesla, a massive company, still is yet to reach level five autonomy. In fact, their cars are only still at level two. And so this is huge for a little-known startup from Bhopal. All right, moving on to the next startup in this list, we have a social enterprise called Gadiji. So Umang Sridhar grew up in a small town called Kishanganj in Madhya Pradesh, where most women just aren't skilled enough to get jobs and would often face tough financial conditions. And so Umang launched Gadiji in 2017 with an investment of just 30,000 rupees from her mother in order to train rural women in the digital printing process on hand-woven Gadi fabrics. Initially, Gadiji operated as a B2B social enterprise, supplying Gadi fabrics directly to fashion retailers, but since then, Umang has also ventured into the B2C space with the launch of her own private label brand called Umang Sridhar Designs, where they actually sell their own hand-woven clothes directly to customers. Today, the company employs more than 1,500 women in rural India, and they've reached an annual turnover of 2.5 crore rupees. All right, coming up next, we have a waste management startup called the Kabadiwala. So today in 2024, we have apps to buy and sell pretty much everything online. But when it comes to disposing your recyclable waste materials, you still have to wait for a Kabadiwala to come to your house. And oftentimes, you don't quite know when this is going to happen either. And so to solve this problem, Anurag Asati and Kavindra Raghuvanshi started the Kabadiwala in 2014 as an online platform where you could schedule a doorstep pickup of your waste materials at a time of your convenience. And even check to see how much you need to pay for different types of waste materials. So far, this company has served more than 3 lakh customers across 5 Indian cities, saving more than 8.1 crore kilograms of waste from going to landfills. And last year, in 2023, the Kabadiwala even raised $2 million in their seed round to further scale their operations and bring their waste recycling services to more Indian cities. All right, now we're going to make our way over to the city of Indore, where we have a company in the agritech space called Gramophone. Founded by Tosif Khan and Nishan Matre in 2016, Gramophone started as a platform offering data-based advisory services to farmers. They would educate them on which seeds and fertilizers to use, diseases that might infect their crops, and how to cure them. The duo were joined by Harshit Gupta and Ashish Ranjan Singh as co-founders in 2017 to turn their farm advisory startup into a full-stack technology platform. And with this new approach, they were able to help farmers with a lot of different things, right from sowing to harvesting to offering them a platform to buy agri cultural inputs and another platform for them to sell their final produce online. This all-in-one approach has enabled Gramophone to reach 2.5 million farmers and generate 180 crore rupees in revenue in FY22, making it one of the biggest agritech startups in the region. All right, moving on to the next company in this list, we have a B2B commerce startup called Shopkirana. Founded by Sumit Gorawad, Tanu Teja Saraswad, and Deepak Tanotia in 2015, Shopkirana lets grocery retailers order their products directly from different brands and delivers them with Within 48 hours, all at the click of a button. And while bigger B2B e-commerce startups like Ordan focus on Tier 1 markets, Shopkirana has strategically focused on building for Tier 2 markets which are left untapped. In fact, despite raising the biggest funding round for a startup in Madhya Pradesh history, Shopkirana has chosen not to move out of the state and instead they're staying close to the Tier 2 market where they operate. And that's the reason why this company, which started as a small operation in a 2BHK in Indore, has now expanded their operations to 14 cities in 6 states and they're already the market leader 
in eight of these cities. Shopkirana made 682 crore rupees in revenue in FY23, and they recently launched their own food brand to set themselves apart from their competitors and further improve their margins as they target profitability in FY24. All right, next up, we have a company called Himalayan Organics. While working as a digital marketing specialist at a dietary supplements company, Vipal Raghavanshi was surprised to learn that while India does have the highest number of vegetarians in the world, most of the nutritional supplements available in the country are actually derived from animals. And this meant that he was having a very hard time finding any locally made vegetarian nutritional supplements for his father. So in 2018, Vibhav partnered with his college friend Sudhiti Sharma to start Himalayan Organics. The duo put up 40 lakh rupees of their own money to do the initial research and development before launching their own line of affordable plant-based organic dietary supplements in 2019. Since then, they've sold their Himalayan herb-based dietary supplements to more than 1 million customers while building a profitable business that's making more than 100 crore rupees every single year. And the best part is that they've done all of this while being a completely bootstrapped startup working out of a tier 2 city in Madhya Pradesh. Coming up next, we have a company called Jai Sutabar, and the origin story for this company is pretty wild. While preparing for the UPSC exams in Delhi, Anubhav Dube got a call from his school friend, Ananaya, who wanted to start a business selling chai. And so without thinking twice, in 2016, Anubhav dropped everything and moved back to Indore to do exactly that. They pulled together 3 lakh rupees to set up their first outlet outside of a girls' hostel, and since then, they've managed to turn Chai Sutabar into a massive chai chain, which has more than 550 outlets in India, and also they have three outlets in Dubai as well. So far, they've been able to generate upwards of 150 crore rupees in revenue, and I actually did a podcast with Anubhav where he talked about the entire story of building this company from scratch. It's an incredible conversation. His story really inspired me, and I think it'll inspire you too, so definitely check that out. You can find a link to it in the top right corner of your screen. All right, now we're going to make our way over to the city of Jabalpur, and the first and only startup from this city in our list is Krishiverse, formerly known as Uranos Robotics. Founded by Nishi Patel, Prakarmani Tripathi, Aditya Singh Patel, and Kafil Asif in 2021, Krishiverse is an IoT-based agritech startup that's building products that are focused on increasing the productivity and profitability of Indian farmers. They started things off by building an automated planting robot, but seeing that building a hardware startup without investment was an uphill battle for a bunch of college kids, they later on decided to launch their flagship IoT-based automated smart pump controller called Nier. Nier can basically convert any regular water pump into a smart pump, allowing farmers to control their pumps remotely from a mobile app. And despite the lack of initial funding, the founders managed to bootstrap their startup by winning several hackathons and collecting 2 lakh rupees in prize money to build their product. Apart from this and some government grants, the company did raise 25 lakh rupees in their first funding round in 2022 to build out their product portfolio. Okay, now we're going to travel to the final city in this list, Gwalior, and the first startup from this city is Aitokri. Founded by husband-wife duo Nitin and Jia Pamnani in 2012, Aitokri is an e-commerce startup that sells artisanal handicrafts and handmade products. E-commerce was almost non-existent in India when Nitin and Jia started their company, especially in tier 2 cities like Gwalior, but despite the lack of infrastructure, Aitokri was bootstrapped with an initial investment of 30 lakh rupees from Nitin's father's rice mill, which acted as their office and warehouse with just 10 artisans. When Flipkart introduced the concept of cash on delivery in India, Aitokri was following the model of cash after delivery to build trust amongst consumers. And one of their USPs is that they send personalized notes to each and every one of their customers along with their product. They continue to do this even after they're shipping out 500 orders every single day, and their unique approach to business has helped them reach 27 crore rupees in yearly revenue and provide a livelihood to more than 10,000 artisanal families. And the last startup in this list is My Mandi, which was founded by Mahan Aryaman Sindhya and Surya Antrana in 2022. My Mandi is enabling vegetable cart pushers and street vendors to buy their vegetables online directly through their app, which is then delivered to their doorsteps. See, most B2B e-commerce startups are catering to the big guys, retail chains and restaurants, but according to the co-founders of My Mandi, there are more than 20 lakh cart pushers in India, and they have to deal with between 15 and 25 suppliers every single day just to buy enough groceries for the day to be sold. And nobody really identified this as a problem to be solved before My Mundi, which has already onboarded more than a thousand cart pushers who are buying their groceries directly from the platform. This massively cuts down on unnecessary costs and also the time involved in negotiating with suppliers every day. Since their launch, they've expanded their presence across four states and have increased their revenue from just 10 lakh rupees in January of 2022 to 70 lakh rupees in March of 2023. 
They've also raised 14 crore rupees from their investors to add more services for their users like building out their online presence and providing access to microloans and also low-cost EVs for rent instead of hand-pushed carts to increase efficiency and profitability. All right, those were our picks for the top 10 Madhya Pradesh startups. And if you enjoyed this video, then you might want to check out the video that we made on the top 10 Uttar Pradesh startups as well. But either way, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.